Antoine Baptiste, Baptiste Entremé. Now some, some of y'all know him from Wayne to Excel. Come on now, come on now. He's a Tony Award winning actor, a community advocate, a champion for justice. Because he understands that it's not just about what you do on the stage, it's about how you live off the stage. So, Mr. Pierce has once said, the role of the artist is not only to reflect the times, but to shape them. Let me say that again, the role of the artist is not only to reflect the times, but to shape them. And his work off the screen has been as impactful as his work on the screen. He's been on the front lines in places like West Memphis, Arkansas. Yeah. Registering voters and encouraging voters. He has stories of his time across the country and I can tell you from my conversation with him earlier today that he knows we matter and that he knows when we get together and when we show up unified, we can realize a what he calls a new Southern strategy. One that will help us to realize the hopes and dreams of our ancestors. So without further ado, let me introduce someone who is a friend to Arkansas. Someone who is standing with us even in the heat. Someone who knows the importance of November and also knows the importance of the day after the election because the work does not stop on election day. Let me bring to the stage Mr. Wendell Pierce. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Come on now, come on. Mr. Wendell Pierce, y'all make some noise for him. Thank you. West Memphis, Arkansas. Keep it going, keep it going. Oh, oh. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, West Memphis, Arkansas. My name is Wendell Pierce, for those of you who don't know me, uh, yes, I was Michael in Waiting to Exhale. The children all know that one. Uh, I, was, uh, I was the reverend in uh, Fighting Temptation. That's for, the, that's for the children and for the reverend here. Um, uh, I'm so honored to be here today. This neighborhood, this city reminds me of my neighborhood in New Orleans, Punch Train Park. It's a beautiful place uh, where families lived and loved, and no matter what you had or what you didn't have, we knew we were rich in love and family, and uh, that's the most important thing. But we are in a very special time right now. In the words of Samuel Beckett, a great playwright, I'm an actor, so uh, I'd like to quote some of the, the writers and playwrights. Samuel Beckett said, at this place, in this moment of time, all mankind is us. All mankind is us. Let us do something while we have the chance before it's too late. Before it's too late, because ladies and gentlemen, this is a very important time in our country. You have to understand that there are those who do not have our best interest at heart. I like to just get down to the nitty gritty. I grew up in a neighborhood like this, and the one thing that I knew that my elders and my parents taught me was, you will be able to do anything you want to do. My grandfather had a saying, can't die three days before the creation of the world. Don't ever tell me you can't do something. Can't die three days before the creation of the world. Don't ever tell me you can't do something. But he also taught me that there are those who do not have our best interest at heart. There are those who do not have our best interest at heart, so it is on us, it is incumbent upon us to exercise our right of self-determination. Self-determination. Whatever I want, I'll be able to, with my own pre-thought and focus, do something about my journey. Exercise my right of self-determination. Change the paradigm by changing my actions. I've been going around the country with the Harris Walls campaign, and I purposely said that I'm going to go to barbershops to challenge black men, the black men who have challenged us. 
What have you done for me? And that's a great question. What have you done for me? I can go down a litany of things that this party and these men and women who have focused their energy and sacrifice to represent you in the legislature here and the mayor who is here and in Clinton and County where people are demonstrating that they don't have your best interests at heart because they're trying to stop you from voting. Right? They're trying to stop you from voting. And that right there tells you how important it is because if it wasn't important, they wouldn't even care if you voted or not. But they know, oh my goodness, if them folks on the South Side vote, oh, we in trouble. Because then we're going to have to represent them and actually live out the true meaning of the creeds of this country and what we believe in. That every man and woman is created equal and that we are going to be a nation, a state, and a city that will represent everybody, not just some. And I learned when I was growing up in a neighborhood just like this in New Orleans that there were those who don't have our best interest at heart. So don't shy away from it. Lean into it. Because there was another saying that we had in the civil rights movement and when I was growing up, when evil people plot, good people plan. When evil people plot, good people plan. And that's why we came out on this Saturday in this beautiful hot sun. I'm from New Orleans, I can handle it. I can handle it. When evil people plot, good people plan. The evil people in this town don't want you to have a say in your own lives. Voting is the bedrock of the American ideology. The American conceit is that you will be able to cast a vote and lead the country and your community in the direction that you want. That you exercise your right of self-determination because you get to declare what your values are. And that is the great, great honor and a sacred honor that you should always act on because there were those who fought battles long before we were here. That Moses generation that gave us the Joshua generation, all the tools that we needed to make sure that we were able to change our lives and have an impact on our community. We owe it to those who have gone before that gave the ultimate sacrifice because there is blood on that ballot box. There is blood on that ballot box. And we do a disservice to these children here. These children here are, re are relying on us to make sure that we create a community, a city, a state, and a country that serves them, that serves everybody. And that is why I'm here to say not to just vote for our campaign. No, like I tell those black men who have challenged me in the barbershops across this nation, what have you done for me? I tell them, I ask you to do one thing, vote for you. Don't vote for me. Don't vote for our vice president. Vote for you. Vote in your own best interest. What do you want? Vote for that. What do you want to see? Vote for that. Vote for your children. Vote for that. Vote for their education, their health care, housing, opportunity, economic development. And when you have that choice, I know you make the right choice. You make the right choice. So be selfish in your voting. Be selfish. Don't vote for the Vice President of the United States. Vote for yourselves. And then you get to dictate to her, when she is President, how you want this nation to be. Because that's the way it works. And I think back, I was just telling folks just a few minutes ago, I shot the film Selma in Alabama. And I was on the Edmund Pettus Bridge as bad as I am when it comes to going to church and everything, I'm sorry. I was playing uh, the Reverend Hosea Williams, who stood next to John Lewis as he walked across the bridge and was beaten on Bloody Sunday. And uh, as we finished shooting, the cameras went away, the trucks went away, and I stood there alone on that bridge looking into the Alabama River and I realized that there were so many souls that gave the ultimate sacrifice for us to be here today. So many sacrifices were made. Men and women who died at the end of a barrel of a gun held by their neighbors saying, 
Dear Lord, I hope my life and my death will not be in vain. Who died not only on the sands of Iwo Jima and the beaches of Normandy, but in the mud of Mississippi and the rivers of Alabama and the red clay of Georgia. Black men and women, white men and women, young and old who gave the ultimate sacrifice so that we can go and vote. And how dare you, how dare you blaspheme their death by not even going out there and voting. That is, a, that is blasphemous to me. That is blasphemous. You are, you are dis, you're doing a disservice to them and doing a dishonor to them. So I tell people all the time, if you don't like what I'm saying, if you don't want, if you think nothing is happening for you, at least go and honor those who gave the ultimate sacrifice so that you can get there because they couldn't. There were so many that gave their lives that we should never forget and remember there is blood on that ballot box. And that's why I am traveling the country, coming to communities like this, and you may not think you have power, but you have the ultimate power. In communities like this, you have 30% to 33% to 35% in what I am calling the new Southern strategy, where you can have an emphasis and an impact on the election to change the world. But you can then dictate to people to say, I want this treasury to serve us, to serve everyone in a way. How many planes can we build to drop bombs? When we can build schools and educate people. There are those who believe that I'm a capitalist. Just like our vice president said, I am a capitalist. There are those who claim to be capitalists, but they aren't. They feel as though there's a finite amount of wealth. And they only they are going to get as much as they can. Only their children will go to school. Only their communities will get opportunity. But I'm a capitalist. I believe if everyone goes to school, the more ideas, the more ideas, the better the ideas, the better the ideas, the best ideas go out into the world and there is economic growth. In the 20th century, political activism was the social justice movement of the 20th century. In the 21st century, economic development and the south side of West Memphis is social justice. That is the social justice movement. We can then put people in the power to say, we will give you an opportunity because we're going to make demands on corporations to come here and give them benefit so then you can have jobs. That there's economic development, there's education for all, and the pie grows. Because I believe in growth, economic growth, social growth, social opportunity. I'm getting down into the weeds, but y'all know what I'm talking about. My mom and daddy said, don't, don't forget the five B's. And I'll remember that today in this hot sun. The five B's. Be brief, brother, be brief. So I'm going to cut it short, but I want you to remember one thing. I'm coming to communities like this because I am a part of this community. Some people believe that because you get to see me doing my plumbing work, I'm just a plumber. I just happen to do it on TV. So people get to see me. I'm a working man, just like the working men and women who are here. The most important thing to me is that I inspire people to see a vision of what we can be as a community. Our hopes and dreams, where we've been, where we hope to go, what our strengths are, what our weaknesses are. Declare what our values are and be moved to go out and act on those values. And the way you act on those values is first to register and then to go out and vote on your values. What's for you? That's the most important thing. And the election ends on November 5th. It ends. We're in the middle of the election right now. Exercise your right of self-determination. What do you want in your lives? Vote for yourself. Be selfish in what you want. Look at what your needs are and say, who's going to give me my needs? Who's going to meet my demands? And vote for your children. Vote for yourselves. Vote for the south side of West Memphis. 
Declare what your values are. Go out and act on them. Remember there's blood on that ballot box. And in the words of Arthur Miller, there's a certain immortality when you step up to your manhood. This is what I was saying to men across this country in barbershops. There's a certain immortality in your manhood. Not given by books or monuments, but the knowledge a man takes with him until his dying day. That on a certain place and at a certain time he cast the shadow of a person who was not himself, but the distillation of everything he has ever seen, all the unsung heart songs of the men and women who feel them, but never get to sing them. He gives voice to, and in doing that, he joins the ages, and he can change the world. People, look to your left and your right. We have the power right now to exercise our right of self-determination. Yeah. Register to vote. Declare what your values are. Let your neighbors know. And go out and vote, the most powerful thing in the world. The vote in America. You're American. The America that you get to ter determine what its values are. And never lose that vision. And never forget those men and women. And Iwo Jima. Normandy. And Selma. And Montgomery. In Arkansas. In Thibodeau, Louisiana. And Tulsa who gave their lives so that we could be here today and exercise our right of self-determination. Remember there's blood on that ballot box. In honor of them, vote. Come on, y'all, make some noise for them. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Make some noise for Mr. Wendell Pierce. Make sure you exercise your right to vote.